Hi friends, it's Monica. Let's talk about what's on my July and August TBR. Now for this TBR, I did want to tackle more of my physical books since for the past few months, I've been reading a lot of library ebooks and audiobooks. So I picked out a lot of good variety these next two months, a lot of different genres, including romance, fantasy, and I think a thriller as well. So let's just get right to it. So first I have my mug pick of my TBRs. So what I have in this mug here are either romance or contemporary books that I have not yet read. But for my last TBR, I am carrying forward um, The Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matson. This one is about Taylor whose family has received unexpected bad news and they decide to go back to their family lake house which they have not been back to since Taylor was 12 years old. There, Taylor reconnects with old friends, an old crush, and even reconnecting with her family. And this may be her only second chance to do so, to reconnect with these people. So I really was looking forward to this, but I don't think I was in the mood for a YA contemporary romance, but I will get to it soon. <laughs> but then my mug pick for this TBR, I'm going to pick that now. So I have heart bones here. My mug pick for this month is Heart Bones by Colleen Hoover. So this one is one that has been sitting on my shelf and I've gotten it when this book released actually, based on how I'm not picked it up. I have read some Colleen Hoover books and I did enjoy them. So I'm looking forward to what this one is about. So my next book is another adult contemporary romance read and it is Something Wilder by Christina Lauren. So I have actually never read a book from Christina Lauren before or from this author duo. And this one does have the same trope as Second Chance Summer, which is the second chance romance trope. This one caught my attention because of the treasure hunter aspect. We have Lily, whose absent father Duke is an infamous treasure hunter and who Lily doesn't really care about. So Lily, she's having a hard time earning money, but she uses her dad's hand-drawn treasure maps to create a tourist trap and lead tourists on fake treasure hunts. And this book is set in Utah through the Red Rock Canyons. Doing this tourist track is enough to pay Lily's bills and she's saving up towards her dream of repurchasing the childhood ranch that her father has sold. But one day an old love of hers wants to reconnect with her and when a trip to the canyon goes wrong, Lily and Leo, her old flame, has to work together to make their way out safely. This one was actually one of my most anticipated reads and I'm honestly really looking forward to this one and I'm hoping for a really nice summer read. My next book is a YA fantasy and has been sitting on my shelf again for some time and it's Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. So this book is a spin-off series from the original Caraval trilogy. I think it's okay if you don't read the Caraval trilogy, but I think it would be better to do so so you know more of the world. But I think you could just go straight into it. And I got the Indigo exclusive cover edition and I really love how it looks. And I don't really have many pink books, so I was really happy when I got this in the mail. And I think the sequel also has like an exclusive cover and I'm eyeing it. <laughs> like I was saying, this book has some characters from the original Caraval trilogy and namely, I think this is not a huge spoiler, but it's the Prince of Hearts. And we also have a new main character whose name is Evangeline Fox. Evangeline has always believed in true love and happy endings until the moment she learns that the love of her life intends to marry someone else. She wishes to stop this wedding and she makes a deal with the Prince of Hearts. And to seal this bargain with the Prince of Hearts, all she has to do is kiss him three times of his choosing of when and where. Very quickly, Evangeline learns making a bargain with an immortal is quite dangerous and there are obviously consequences to that. I did really have fun reading the original trilogy, so I'm looking forward to how this one will be. My next book is also a romance and it's a book that I had in a previous TBR and it's A Rogue of One's Own by E.B. Dunmore. This is the second book in a Lake of Extraordinary Women series. The first book, Bringing Down the Duke, was really fun and it did remind me of Bridgerton and it was really nice to read a historical fiction romance set in the Regency era. So each book does focus on a separate couple. So with A Rogue of One's Own, we're focused on Lucy and Lady Lucy is an Oxford suffragist which means a person who is advocating for equal rights for women 
and other groups of minorities. Lucy and her band of suffragists has raised enough money to take control of a London major publishing house in order to stage a coup against the parliament. However, with all of that happening, a rogue stands in Lucy's way and they butt heads and Lucy's determined to not allow Tristan to uproot her plans even if that's at the cost of her own heart. So I'm hoping there's a lot more romance and tension similar to bringing down the Duke in this one as well. So next on my TBR is one of my five star book predictions and it is Ace of Spades by Ferda Abika Ediyeming. So this one is a YA mystery thriller, I think. Ace of Spades takes place in a private academy. We're following Devin and Chiamaka who are the top two students of their academy and they're both in the running to be valedictorian. After the nominations of valedictorians are announced, a mysterious and anonymous person starts messaging both Devin and Chiamaka threats. And these threats are that this mysterious person will reveal their deepest and darkest secrets to the public unless they follow whatever this person has to say. But it quickly turns into a dangerous game when Aces continues to torment these two students and at what cost will these two students will go to to protect their future and i've been reading a lot of mysteries and thrillers lately in the past month or so and i'm really looking forward to this one and see if it has anything new to bring to the table so continuing on my emily henry train i do have another one of her books on my tbr and it is book lovers by emily henry i don't have a physical copy of this one so I do have a hold on it on the library and I really do hope that book lovers will be more similar to Beatree rather than the people we made on vacation because I really did not like the people we made on vacation. Book lovers, we are following Nora Stevens and she is a literary agent and her life is all about books. And in her life, she's only a heroine for her clients and her little sister Libby. One day, Libby drags a reluctant Nora to go on a small sister's trip for a month-long vacation in a small town in North Carolina. Her sister hopes that Nora will have that small town cutesy romance that, that we see in rom-com movies, but the only person she is constantly running into is Charlie, who is a book editor and they are considered rivals. And Charlie and Nora have actually met previously on several occasions back in the city. So we have two rivals in the publishing industry, both in a small town, and I sense there's a romance brewing between them. So I think there will be some rivals to lovers or even forced proximity tropes in this book. So I'm excited for this one, but I really do have high expectations for book lovers. So my next pick is from a sci-fi series and it's the third book in that series and it's Cytonic by Brandon Sanderson. The first book is Skyward and the second book is Star Sight, which I both enjoyed the discovery of aliens and the sci-fi elements in the series so far. And lately I've been watching the sci-fi show The Expanse and I was really really enjoying that sci-fi show so I wanted to pick up a sci-fi book. To give you a little bit of info on the series, we're following Spensa who dreams of becoming a pilot. Spensa does live on a strange planet and that's not Earth and it's being attacked by mysterious aliens. Spensa herself also has some past history in this planet with her father maybe causing a bit of trouble and she has difficulties getting into flight school but she eventually does make it in. One day she is stumbling around the planet and she finds an abandoned ship but the ship might be more alive than Spensa first thought and I really enjoyed that aspect of this book and all the different sci-fi elements that Brendan Sanderson delivers in a really accessible manner. I really love the setting, the area of combats that we have, and the characters, the alien space mystery, and the growth of Spensa as a character. And after reading book two, I'm really excited to find where Spensa and our group of characters that we meet along the way are now and how they're dealing with all the problems that they had had from before. My last book on this list is Broken Web by Lori M. Lee and this is the second book in a series of Forest of Souls being the first book. Now that I think about it, like I haven't mentioned much about this series like Forest of Souls on this channel but I remember when the Force of Souls first released, I really loved it and it was one of my favorites of that year. So what is this book series about? It takes place in Thai 
T-H-I-Y, I don't know how to pronounce that. And this is a continent that has three different races and kingdoms. So we have the humans, the shaman, and the shadow blast. We follow Shersha, who is a human orphan. She has dealt with a lot of hardship and she is currently being trained to be the next queen shadow, which is a trusted spy and assassin. But after a tragic attack on her best friend Sengeo, Sersha discovers that she has the ability to revive people and she does revive her best friend and she is sent to the deadwood where restless souls reside and is the spider king's domain this deadwood is growing wild and expanding really really quickly and only a soul guide can help tame it and lo and behold shersha is that soul guide she is tasked to help maintain the peace between increasingly powerful kingdoms and maybe war that's coming on the horizon now in the secret broken web there is that impending war that's approaching. Shersha has a new enemy to defeat and she also has new abilities to learn about and understand of what she actually is. I remember this fantasy being super atmospheric and creepy and it really draws you in and I really cannot wait to get back into this world. So those are all the books that are on my TBR for these next two months. I'm um, really hoping that I do read all of them as always. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you all had a good day. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and ring that notification bell to not miss any future uploads. I'll see y'all soon.